in Linux, you have a lot of different bars at the top. Is that right? Or yeah. does it, is it depending on the, I don't know how it works. So in like the, the major desktops, like in KDE, like in GNOME, things like that, where it's, it's not just a window manager, it's a full suite of applications. They usually have some sort of bar included. Um, if you're using a window manager like I do, some of them do have included bars, but most of them just rely on these third-party solutions. So in the case of Wayland, a very common, uh, very common one to use is called Waybar. It's a pretty standard bar. It's pretty easy to configure. It's not the most, um, I guess, not the most in-depth in how you want things to be laid out but it's a pretty simple one to work with. Uh, if you are more of a developer mindset and you want to really make something custom, a lot of people have been talking about a project called Quickshell recently, where it's basically just... The, the framework is there to make a bar, and you write everything in the... Um, in Qt Quick, the like Qt uh, UI language. Hmm... Okay. Yeah, the one that I use has two options. You mm. can configure all the different items in Bash, which is what I do, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you can add I can, you can do whatever you want in there, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I use Bash or it has a different option in Lua. The same developer created both options, Bash and Lua. Mm -hmm. I guess he uses new of them. Yeah, definitely uses new of them. So that's why the other option in Lua. Right. Yeah, there is a um there's a lot more bars on the X11 side because that's kind of been around a lot longer. But on on Wayland, we definitely we have a lot of options that are available. Um, it's kind of just a matter of how you feel comfortable configuring it, I guess. Like you can do a lot of stuff with all of them, but do you want to have a bunch of pre-made modules? Would you want to go and write a lot of stuff by hand to make it exactly the way you want it to be? It kind of depends on the sort of approach that you personally want to take. Hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Good to know. All right. And that's something that I have been considering as well. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm going to create a video about Arch, how to mm -hmm. install Arch, because that's going to get me some views, you know, but I don't think I will do X11 because I'll be like in the 80s and an old, uh, uh -huh. I don't know, an old man. So mm -hmm. I think I'll have to go with, what is it? Wayland? Yeah, Wayland. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think it, for the, the window manager you'd want to use, I think Sway is like the most obvious choice because it's, that is the Wayland version of i3, which is very familiar for what you've already been using. It's what Yabai and Aerospace are based off of. Um, mm. So that's a pretty solid option to go with. Otherwise, if you want to have a lot more sort of, not necessarily just visual customization, but just customization over the feel of the environment, I do think Hyperland is also a really good choice as well. Those are kind of the the main Wayland window manager options right now. There are plenty of others. There's like little niche ones where they're, you know, maybe like one guy works on it and it's they, they wanted to focus on a very specific kind of workflow. But I think messing around with either one of those two is probably going to be your... They're the most well-supported. They're the most well-documented and... You know, there's a lot of plugins for them. A lot of a lot of people have done things with them already. So if there's something you're like, can I do this? Is there a way to make this work? In a lot of cases, someone's probably already tried to do that. It gives you sort of a baseline to build off of. And what's the difference between um, Hyperland, you said? No, Wayland. And uh, what's the other one you just... Um, Sway. Is that ah? Is so that, Wayland is, and X11, those are just the different protocols used basically to build the environment. Um, Sway and Hyperland are two window managers that are available using the Wayland protocols. Okay, and the difference between Sway and Hyperland, if I want to use stack mode, you say Sway would be like the the best option for yes. me, right? Sway is. Sway is the Wayland re-implementation of i3, 
and Yabai and Aerospace are both based off of I3. So it's like the most logical step to go with. You're basically just using the thing that you're already kind of comfortable with anyway. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I, the only reason I don't, I, I don't immediately recommend Sway is it tends to be fairly fairly conservative in adding new Wayland functionality and we're still seeing a lot of heavy development new features being added sort of trying to iron out a lot of those issues during this transition process from the old x11 into Wayland um Hyperland tends to be quite a bit faster in adding new things so it, it it's not like you necessarily need a lot of the new things being added. A lot of the like the core groundwork is there for a completely usable environment. It's just there might be some things where maybe you notice there's uh, th there's something which doesn't play exactly nicely, and that's gonna have a new feature added to it quite a bit faster. Hmm. Okay. Like um, okay, uh, makes sense. what one example is um, there still isn't really a great way to do uh, like so with OBS um, you know how you can like not be focused on the window and you can press whatever your keybinds are and control the window. You can use like a global hotkey system for that. Like that's a thing that exists on macOS on every every system. Um, Wayland. There's still, like, a work in progress to getting that specifically working. But with OBS, because there is the WebSocket stuff there, you can work around it. Um, I have a question there. Yes. Like, the keyboard mapper that I use is Canata, right? Uh -huh. So, Canata, from Canata, I do everything. So, Canata calls a script, a Python script. Mm -hmm. That script changes my scene. So, if I leave that out of the way, I wouldn't have issues, right? So, if from Canada, which is my keyboard mapper directly, I interact with OBS. I think I wouldn't have a problem, right? Yeah, how does the script work? Does it just call the, the WebSocket to control it? Is that... Uh, the script is called... Um, what did I name it? Let me see. Scene. Switch underscore scene dot py in my dot files, oh. right? So I just call the script. I pass the scene name as an argument. I can do it in an in an authenticated or not authenticated way because I retrieve the password from one password, mm -hmm. but I just disable that because cannot sign one password. We're not getting along each other well, so I just and I pass another argument, no auth, so that it does not require a password. Of course, I have authentication disabled in in OBS, uh, right? So wait, where are the? Oh wait, hold up. Scene, scene switcher, switch scene dot. Yeah, switch yep. scene, switch yep, yep, scene dot yep, cool. py. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. It's OBS WebSocket stuff. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, all you would end up okay. doing there is instant. You would just be able to run the keybind from um from Hyperland. Yep. Hyperland can just can do that, or if you want to use some other system, maybe to run the keybinds. Okay, yeah, Canata is the one that I'm planning on using because I already have everything. Well, I'm setting well, is, up Canata right now. Does I I is that a thing that exists on the Linux? Oh, it is a thing Linux. on the Linux side. Yep. Okay, it's macOS, Linux, what? and even Windows. You know, so hold on. Is it um, a? It, it might just be an X11 thing, though. Oh really? Yeah. So on this is this is one of the the issues that does exist with um with Wayland right now so on Wayland there was this sort of heavy emphasis on security from the start and mm -hmm. there wasn't much thought put into some of this very useful functionality that's kind of always existed on like you know on computers uh <laughs> and there's a lot of there's a lot of initial development on Wayland where the people who were designing the early protocols, they thought about their own use cases and then never really thought about how other people use their systems. So there's kind of been like 17 years of trying to like backtrack some of those really bad initial design decisions. Um, I don't know about this. I'm assuming it only works in X11, which I guess is kind of annoying for you. 
Um, let's see. Kanata, yeah, because that's the reason why I switched to Canada to so that it's compatible with Linux. But yeah. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. I see a report. I see. Did someone? Maybe did someone fix it? I I'm not sure if this. Because I saw a report saying it doesn't work on Wayland, and then I saw a fix saying it does work on Wayland. Um, I'm not certain. I would, especially if you want to make use of that, I would recommend doing a bit of digging around to see if it actually does work on Wayland. Otherwise, you could always use i3 on X11, and <sighs> yeah, it... Yeah. We which kind of creates an interesting situation where a lot of people are trying to move away from X11 right now. If you're doing it on, on Arch, Arch is going to have the software available forever. But, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to use the new the new Wayland thing that everyone's using, it does create a problem. 